Okay, so I'm going to do uh, a quick little lecture on simplifying radicals with fractions. Okay, so um, I'm going to hold off till the end before I actually do uh, rationalizing the denominator. Because uh, right now we just want to look at patterns, look at things that might be helpful to us. Let's say we had something like this. So this is the first one. Uh, maybe I'll move over to the left so that I can leave some up. So we'll start here. One, we'll say the square root of 98 over 2. The square root of 98 over 2. All right. So the first thing I look at is I ask myself, self? <laughs> no. Is there a perfect square? Is 98 a perfect square? No, it isn't. Is 2 a perfect square? No, it isn't. So the way they're written right now, it's not going to be any, it would not be advantageous to leave it that way. I would actually want to ask myself, well, since 2 goes into both, they're both even numbers, 2 goes into them, so I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to keep it in this big thing for now. 2 into 98, that goes in 4 times and uh, 9 times, for four, 49. Huh? Uh, 49, oh, so this. 92 divided by 2 is 49. Square root of 49 is 7. So I'm done. That was pretty easy, right? All right, let's try num try another one. Um, okay, let's say the square root is 7 over 16. The square root of 7 over 16. So I ask myself, is 7 a perfect square? No. Is 16 a perfect square? Oh, yes, it is. That has a perfect square root. So, since it does, I'm going to separate this into the square root of 7 over the square root of 16. And then that allows me to have the square root of 7 over 4. And there's nothing else I can do because the square root of 7, there's no perfect square that goes into 7 other than 1. But 1 doesn't change anything. So that's my answer. All right, let's try one more. Three, let me see. Um, uh, sure, let's try this one. The square root of b over c squared. So same thing like I did up here. I asked myself, does b, is b a perfect square? No, it isn't. Is c a perfect, c squared a perfect square? Yeah, it is. So if it is, I'm going to immediately separate them. I'm going to say the square root of b over the square root of c squared, right? Square root of c squared is c. So I've got the square root of b on the top over c. Square root of c squared is c. c times c is c squared. c times c is c squared. There we go. All right, so that's, those are three. Let's do a few more. We've got start with four now. Again, you can pause the video anytime you want. So four. Okay. Well, let's say we do. Let's let's make it a little. Well, let's do one more like that. Square root of seventeen over twenty-five. So I ask myself, is seventeen a perfect square? No. Is twenty-five a perfect square? Yes. Therefore, I'm going to separate them. Square root of 17 over the square root of 25. Square root of 25 is 5, so I can have the square root of 17 over 5. I make sure that I don't have a radical in the denominator when it's my answer, and sure enough, I don't. That's good. Square root of 17, there's nothing. 17 is a prime number, so there's nothing I could take out of that to simplify that. So we'll leave that. We're done with that. Number five. Uh, let's do something a little harder. Let's do the square root of 4x squared over 36x. This is similar to a problem that was on the test. Um, I asked myself, is 4 a perfect square? Oh my gosh, yes. Is x squared a perfect square? Oh my gosh, yes. Is 36 a perfect square? Oh my gosh, yes. Is x a perfect square? No. So since I have these perfect squares, I'm going to separate things. On the top, I have the square root of 4 
times the square root of x squared. On the bottom, I have the square root of 36 times the square root of x. Right? So now, square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x squared is x. x times x is x squared. So x over the square root of 36 is 6. Then I have the square root of x. Now, since you know how to rationalize the denominator, that all that means when they say rationalize the denominator, that means that whenever you have a square root sign in the denominator, we've got to get rid of it. So there's a very easy way to get rid of that square root sign in the denominator. And I'm going to multiply it times 1. The only thing is my 1 is going to look different than a typical 1. It's going to be this. I'm going to multiply the square root of x times the square root of x. And I've got to do the same thing up here as well. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the top so that it's the same value. But square root of x times the square root of x is equal to the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared is x. So the square root of x times the square root of x is x. So what I have is I have 2. On the bottom, all I have is 6x. On the top, I have 2x times the square root of x. 2x square root of x. And that's my final answer. Okay, that's an example of utilizing the um, uh, rationalizing the denominator, that approach. Okay, let's do another one that's a little more challenging. Um, let's do, okay, let's do this one. The square root of 7, 8 of the 4th, I think. It's hard to read this. Over 9a squared. 9a squared. Okay. I asked myself, is 7 a perfect square? No. Is a to the 4th a perfect square? Actually, it is. Is 9 a perfect square? Yes. Is a squared a perfect square? Yes. So that tells me it's worth trying to separate things out. I'm going to try this. So I'm going to have square root of 7 times the square root of a to the 4th. Remember, a to the 4th is a squared times a squared, right? Notice the square root of anything with a exponent will be half of that exponent. Half of that exponent of 4 is 2. So a squared, a to the 2 times a to the 2 is a to the 4. Those both will come out as a squared, right? So over, over, we have the square root of 9 times the square root of a squared. So my final answer is a squared. I like to write things first. I like to put the square root signs at the end. So all I have left of all this, of a square root of a to the fourth, is a squared times the square root of 7. The square root of 9 is 3. And then the square root of a squared is a. Notice I'm writing everything out. I'm not doing anything in my head. I'm not leaving anything to chance, right? I'm doing everything on the board so I can see everything I've done. That way I can go back and check my work. Is this correct? Is the square root of 7, a to the fourth, the same as square root of 7 times square root of a squared, a squared? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, great. So I can actually see what I did and I can check my work. If I don't write these things out and I just try to write the final answer, there's no way to check my work. Absolutely no way. Um, at least not quickly. I mean, I'd have to go back and rewrite it all out and then check it and see if I got the same answer. But this way I can check things very, very quickly. All right. Um, well, let's just do a few more. And there, there are some kinds of problems that um, so far everything we've done, it was actually beneficial to separate things out right away. But what if I did something like this? What if I did um, um, the square, we're, I think we're on number seven, right? The square root of um, 4 36 Oh, well actually that's not the best example. <laughs> well, okay, we'll do it. So square, actually that, that is a perfect square and that's a perfect square. So that means I could do the square root of four 
over the square root of 36, which is equal to 2 over 6, right? Which is equal to 1 third, right? All right, so let's try another one, see if I can get a better example here. What if I did... Um, Um, uh, oh, that's not a good example either. Jeez. Um, on the test, I did this one. This is what I'm trying to think of. I just can't think of an example right now. I did something like this. Five, square root of five twentieths. Now, I asked myself, is that a perfect square? No. Is that a perfect square? No. Well, if neither are perfect squares, then before I separate them out like this, I'd like to ask myself, could I simplify this fraction? Because maybe the simplified version of this fraction will have perfect squares in it. Let's see, 5 goes into both of these, right? So 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 20 four times. So really what I have is the square root of 1 fourth. Is that a perfect square? Yes, square root of 1 is 1. Is that a perfect square? Square root of 4 is 2, yes. So I'm going to separate it now. Now that I have a reason to separate, I'm going to do that. Square root of 1 over the square root of 4. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. So it's 1 half. Um, got to start looking at these and see what is the best step to take. This one I actually could have also simplified this. I could have said 4 goes into that once, 4 goes into that 9 times. 1 ninth. The square root of 1 ninth. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 9 is 3. That would have been another way I could have done that. Um, I think, okay, then let's try this one. Square root of 45 over 4. We're almost done here. The square root of 45 over 4. All right, I asked myself, is that a perfect square? No. Is that a perfect square? Yes. So, in that case, I'm going to separate it. Square root of 45 over the square root of 4. All right, so the square root of 45 is what I have so far over 2 because the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 45, though, is there a perfect square that goes into 45? Does 4 go into 45? No. Does 9? Nine, 9's a perfect square. Does 9 go into 45? 9 times 5 is 45. <gasps> okay, so here we go. We've got square root of 9 times the square root of 5. That should equal square root of 45. It does. All over 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So we have 3 square root of 5 over 2. And we're done. Quite simple. Okay, I think that's it for now, but I just really want you guys to get really comfortable with these fractions, okay, uh, with radicals. Again, um, maybe I'll do one more just for rationalizing the denominator. You guys remember that, I'm sure. Rationalizing the denominator. We did one of them. I think it was problem number two, two or three, I can't remember. But Okay, so let's just do one that's on rationalizing. Let me pull up that paper. Try to use something from that sheet. Um, oh, God. I cannot get these apart. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, square root of seven. Okay. How about this? The square root, I think we're at 10, right? Square root of 75 over 2. Is that a perfect square? No. Is that a perfect square? No. Hmm. Can I divide 2 into 75? Not and get a um, whole number. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just separate them. Square root of 75 over the square root of 2. Oh, let's see. Now, I the problem is I don't want this but I also don't want to make this a bigger number to make it even harder for me to simplify because so I'm going to simplify the numerator first in this case sometimes I would just multiply both top and bottom by the square root of 2 to get rid of this out of the denominator but I know I'm going to be able to simplify that because that is a perfect square that goes into 75 is 25 so I could say the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. 3 times 25 is 75, all over the square root of 2. So that gives me 5 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. I'm going to rewrite that here. 5 square root of 3 over the square root of 2. 
now I have to rationalize the denominator because there is a radical sign, a square root sign, in my denominator, and that is illegal to leave there. So I'm going to have to change it. I am going to get rid of that square root of 2 simply by multiplying it times itself, times the square root of 2. But whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm really multiplying this fraction by the value of 1, because the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2 equals 1. It's just going to make this look different, but that's okay. 5, I don't multiply this 2 times the 5. I multiply the, the 2 is underneath the radical sign. The 2 I have to multiply times the other thing that's underneath the radical sign. So it's going to be 5 square root of 6, 2 times 3 is 6, all over square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. Another way to say it is square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. But you'll find that whatever, if you have the same numbers that are under a square root sign, and you're multiplying together, it will just be that number without the square root sign. And that's it. That's all we're going to do. So those are ones that I just want to make sure you guys have in your notes. There will be a retake on um, for the exam on Friday. We're going to do a few more of these each night um, uh, for you guys to practice. Okay, thanks. Bye.